Well, it's race day. After uh, preparing for months, um, since, let's see, I started uh, last week of October, uh, or November, and it is now April, so what's that, five, five months of uh, preparing? Now, I, I was riding a lot more um, December, J December and January, but I was more doing like a zone two, like a base ride thing. And since then I've, uh, upped the intensity quite a bit. And, um, but with that, I've been riding less. I've been riding about four and a half hours a week on average for the past two months or so. Um, but I'm nervous. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing about, about racing. That's what you pay for. You pay to be nervous. This is this is why we do it. We pay to feel those butterflies and and to f have a feeling. And that's one of the reasons why I quit BMX. Is I was on the the gate, uh, the starting gate for the main event at a, at a big race, and I didn't feel anything. I had no adrenaline. I didn't care. I was just kind of over it. And once you have that feeling, yeah, you gotta just cut it. You're not into it anymore. But now I've been preparing quite a bit. I don't really know what to expect, but I'm excited, man. Um, so I'm racing Cat 3, 30 to 39 men. There's five people signed up, but here's the thing. We're starting three classes at the same time. So like 15 to 18, the 20 year olds and the 30 year olds, me, we're all starting in the same wave at the same time. So I don't know how that's gonna work out. I mean, now my class is five, but we're starting with 24 people. So it's like, dang, now there's like a little bit of strategy. I'm worried, uh, I'm not worried, but is there gonna be a bottleneck? What I wanna do is I wanna just mark the people in my class and just kind of know who's in my class, but I know I'm probably gonna forget. <laughs> so I'm gonna do my best to just mark these people and go, okay, this is who's in my class. Cause the goal here today is one, not to get last place. And two is to be able to ride with someone the whole time and and not just be in no man's land. Cause like I rode, I practiced this course two times this week by myself. And if I'm out there racing today, just by myself, not actually racing next to someone, well, what's the difference between just practicing and racing then? So I wanna be able to ride with someone. I wanna do some tactics. Um, for practice on this course, um, this course is pretty technical. I'll say it. it I thought I, I built up this XC hardtail because I've ridden here before, Fayetteville, Arkansas. I live 30 minutes up the road. I've ridden here before on a trail bike, and this course, well, it's pretty smooth. It's, it's so fun. The downhills are fun. But um, now that I – so I, I built up an XC bike, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to build up a hardtail because this course is smooth. It's It's nothing to it. But then getting on the hardtail and riding it, I'm like, oh man, I wish I had a full suspension because there's a lot of G outs and a lot of big <laughs> So, um, yeah, I wish I was on a full suspension, but hey, what can you do? I almost rented a uh, S-Works Evo Epic, like a $15,000 uh, XC bike. I could have rented one for 150. They had one available, but I'm like, ah, whatever. I mean, is that kind of like taking it too far, <laughs> especially for my first race? So I don't really know what to expect. Um, definitely a little nervous, but we'll see how it goes. I, I'm gonna, oh, about this course. So the downhills are really fun. They, they made it fun for like, you know, local riding and stuff, but I gotta shut that part off in my brain. And I really practiced the last time I was out here was recovering on the downhills and that, that means I, I can't push it on the downhills. I can't, you know, carve turns and flow jumps. I got to just stay relaxed, breathe. I got to be able to recover while I'm going downhill. So I practice some tactics and I'm not going to blow myself out. See, the thing, the thing is why this is a big deal for me is because I'm a BMXer my whole life. I'm a sprinter. So I'm used to racing for 30 seconds or less at a time. And we, we would travel to nationals and the total time race between two days was like two minutes collective time racing on the track. And now I'm gonna be racing for like an hour. So 
it is totally different. And with BMX, you just go as hard as you can. But with mountain biking, you got to conserve, you got to preserve yourself. You can't just kill yourself off on the first lap. So that's going to be a big thing for me is practicing restraint. And when I started mountain biking in 2020, I couldn't even ride five minutes continuously without just being gassed out. So this is a big, long thing in the making for me. And uh, yeah, and it really, it's going to decide if, if I'm going to keep doing this or if I'm not, I'm, I'm either going to fall in love or I'm going to be like, all right, that was, you know, 50 bucks sign up and membership fee. Is it really worth it? I did a few XC races back in 2021. Yeah. 2021. And, uh, I ended up deciding like it wasn't really worth it. Cause I wasn't racing anybody. Um, I was just in no man's land. I'm like, why am I paying $80 to do this? Like it, it just doesn't even make sense. But this time I'm prepared. I know about tactics. I know so much more. I feel like I am a completely different person since the last time I did XC racing, but that's enough jabbering on. I'm going to go warm up a little bit and then, um, I'll see you on the start line. So I am racing cat three 30 to 39 men, only four riders showed up. So these are the four. We got Tyler in the red maroon. We got Eric in the colorful kit, and then Jordan, who's in the uh, who's the skinny guy in the group there. A little bit about me: I've been training five hours a week since December, and I'm riding a Polygon Syncline XC Hardtail custom build with the wheels with bird spokes. The bike weighs just 22 pounds, and I guess I'm somewhat of a local to this course. I live 30 minutes away, but right off the bat, everyone just takes off. And my heart rate is already way higher than I want it to be. And I had to remind myself right away. It's like, I only have a class of four. Like I just got to focus on them and just mark them. Looking back, I probably could have just like held back right here and just went at my own pace. Cause it little it bottlenecks right here. And with this wave, we were starting with the 15 year olds, the 20 year olds, and then the 30 year olds. And then the 40 year olds were like two minutes starting behind us. So I was, I could really just be in last place right here and been chilling, you know? So, but I have my eye on Eric here, who is in the colorful kit. Um, he told me he had just raced a 5k, like ran a 5k the day before. I'm like, oh man, this dude's fit. But he was on a, uh, like a regular hard deal. He wasn't even on an XC bike. So I was like, oh man, I don't, I don't know. Like, I thought you needed an XC bike to win these kind of races. <laughs> but uh, maybe Eric will prove me wrong on that one. But I can still see everyone here. I'm currently in third. And this is uh, this is where it goes into a downhill section. And it's, it's really hard because this downhill section is fun. I mean, I've ridden here before. I only live 30 minutes from here. It's fun. It has jumps and turns. And you really want to just have fun and kind of push it and generate speed but yeah i gotta really i had to remind myself like dude chill out and i looked down um after this turn here i looked down i saw my heart rate was 179 i was like oh man this this is going too fast already i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get my heart rate down i gotta start taking some deep breaths <laughs> But the good thing here is, you know, my group isn't opening up a huge, big gap. I mean, I can see the guys, so it's like, all right, that's all I got to focus on. So before when I raced XC, I didn't really know how to pace myself. I just thought you go all out, but really it's only, you only have to beat the other guys by, you know, hair basically. So what's the point of just riding like crazy? to win by a huge margin you know so as long as you can mark your competitors that's as hard as you got to try so um this section right here there was like a couple little split lines here like he he just went to the left and i don't know it was a little too technical for me when it really had no any any of the downhills you really couldn't make up time because right when you get to the uphill right here it's like all right everybody's all together and I actually thought about passing this guy right here. And I'm like, I don't know if he's going to go fast. I really, 
I didn't know what to expect because I've I've never met these guys before. But this is this is the real first climb of the day. Just getting settled in here. I mean, we're only like five six minutes into this thing, and right away we're getting some dudes getting dropped off the back. I think that was a 15 to 18 year old guy. But those those. Those lightweight kids, man, they'll they'll pass you in like the weirdest spot on the climb, and it's like, how can they do that? Well, it's because they weigh 50, 60 pounds less, maybe even more. But right here is a split section right here, so it was a really hard rock garden, and you can see people getting off their bikes right there. And right here, I turn the corner and I see a big traffic jam, but the guy Eric, he just squeaks up the hill there, right around that traffic jam, and the fourth place rider just passed me so i'm like oh man i gotta follow the first place guy because i'm thinking maybe i can you know win this thing so i, I tried a little hard because i knew this was a downhill section i was like all right i want to have clear air here and that way i can do this optional jump coming up and i can kind of take a breather but oh man i'm already like 194 heart rate and it's like 10 minutes into this race what am i doing well, right here, it has some really cool uh, drops and everything. You can skip two of the drops, and then that's a pretty smooth drop. That's a pretty smooth drop, and uh-oh. <laughs> so I say, hey, uh, let me jump this thing. So I pass this kid, jump this jump. I, I I don't know if it's if it was really worth it. On the preview, I thought it was worth it, but nah. It's like right, right now, it's all about recovering down this downhill. So I'm just trying to breathe. Get that heart rate down. But these turns are so inviting to like really carve them, but oh, you just gotta, gotta stay loose, you know? So right about here, I am looking back. I'm trying to see where are the other two riders. Cause dude, after that first place guy went on that split section, I, I could barely even see him. I just saw him in the corner up there, but to be honest, spoiler alert, that's the last time I ever saw him in the race. This this dude, Eric, that won, he beat us all by like seven yep. minutes, dude. I don't know how he did it. And his lap times were like on par with Cat 1 guys. So there's that uh, younger kid just passing me by. He's going so fast up the climbs. I'm going to have to lose some weight if I'm going to you know keep progressing in this because i i mean 200 300 watts that's a decent amount of wattage to be climbing and sustaining but if i weighed you know 150 pounds my watts per kilo goes from 2.6 to 3.1 and that's no increase in ftp that's just free speed right there basically and that's just from losing weight so it's definitely one thing to work on but i mean i've weighed 175 to 185 pounds since i was like 17 so getting to 165 160 is definitely gonna be uh challenging but we'll talk more about that after the race and there goes one of the guys jordan up into second place but I saw him here, you know, my heart rate's 180, I'm doing 383 watts, and I saw him pass by that fast, and I'm like, dude, how hard is he pushing right now? I don't know. He's either super fast, I mean, he looked a lot lighter than me. He's either super fast, or he's already hurting. But at first, at this point, I just thought, okay, he's super fast, whatever. I'm going to battle it out with Tyler, who I, I just looked behind and I saw that he was pretty close by. I was like, all right, well, it'll be a battle for third and fourth, a.k.a. last. <laughs> so, hey, that was one of the goals. Don't get last place. So right here it goes into the cyclocross course, and I was just like, man, I got to recover. And you can already see my heart rate coming down a little bit. And you really couldn't push it on these downhills because it was just like the grass had gone and it was just kind of dry and you really you just couldn't make up time right here so it was all about just recovering deep breath and just flow in these corners but one thing i noticed going into this little technical section that they 
This wasn't in the first practice that I wrote on Tuesday. This was not part of the amateur course. So they added this later on. But I noticed right here, I actually pulled up a lot on second place by just rolling those that rock garden nicely, staying loose. And I'm like, okay, maybe I can stay close to him. Maybe I can mark him. Look, look how much time I gained back on him. So... I think that's just part of, you know, being a, a tr riding trails this whole time. I just, you know, and my my XC bike, my Polygon Syncline, I actually found out real quick that it's a pretty stiff bike. So those rock gardens, it, it felt stiff, but I you know, I, I mean, I, I ride hardtails a lot. So I, I could just kind of flow those rock gardens. I was kind of used to it. But right here is the longest sustained slash steepest climb and they made us do this like what three two times a lap so we did this four times total it, it's a uh, it's a grinder for sure and uh there there he goes again he he's definitely lightweight dude so i was like all right you know he can go but i pulled back on him on the downhill so maybe Maybe that's just how it's going to go. I mean, you don't really want to race an XC race where you got to push it on the downhill because you got to recover. But I'm like, maybe I can keep him in sight. So at this point, I'm pretty hopeful. Now, I was definitely the only one that I saw in the entire day running a freaking water hydration bag. I'm running an Uzwi bag. I don't know if that's how you say it, but this Uzwi bag has a um, action camera plate built into the straps, so I don't have to wear like a GoPro strap. And the GoPro chest mounts absolutely suck, but I, I was like, man, I'm already kind of at a disadvantage, like having this water bag on my backpack or on my back having a camera, you know, affecting my aerodynamics. So I just took everything out of the bag that I could. And also on the camera, I usually run a microphone setup on it, but I'm like, I just want to reduce as much as I can. Um, so I, I left the microphone in the car. So forgive me, there's a lot of wind noise. I try to edit it out, but it's, it's just impossible because it was a super windy day. But look at this. I just caught back up to, to, uh, to Jordan here. And I was just kind of, I kind of lost sight of him for a second. I was just kind of flowing downhills, but there he is again, right there. So, man, I was pretty hopeful. And here we are at that climb again. They just, they made us go under the course and we're back at this climb again. Like that seemed pretty quick. I hope you don't mind me fast forwarding the, uh, the slow uphills here. Cause not really much to talk about. But coming up right about here, I get past, so now I am in last place. And I kind of signal to the, the rider there, Tyler, I say, hey, that, that guy right there in, is second place. So maybe we can kind of work together, because, I mean, he's going pretty fast up these climbs. Um, both of those guys are, so I'm like, maybe I can tack on to Tyler here. The goal here was to race with people and did not get last place. So if I can tack on to him, maybe we can make this a long drawn out race and I can kind of start employing some tactics that I've been uh, learning on Zwift racing, which is just kind of sitting up on someone's back wheel for an extended period. I'm talking 20, 30 minutes. And we'll talk more about that later. I mean, sometimes people get kind of sick of you just sitting on your wheel uh, in road racing, they get kind of mad and they start flicking their elbow if they're not taking the wind, but that's more if they're trying to like catch a breakaway here. And I had already known from this point that first place dude was just insane. I don't even, maybe he's a sandbagger. Should he have been in cat three? If his lap times are cat one speed, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know, but, um, I, I already kind of known, but look at, look at us right here. Second, third and fourth all bunched up in a group right here and then tyler he looked pretty legit looking at his kit and his bike and everything i'm like oh maybe this dude's like a full-on xc dude so i don't know if i'm gonna be able to keep up with that you know with racing there's a lot a lot of it is uh your mentality 
So you can be intimidated by people. The higher in the rankings you go, the more intimidated you'll be. And you can you can choke just by like, oh, that guy is super fast. And you don't believe in your head that you can do it. And you just won't. But right here, you know, I, I'm trying to draft. But there's such a big crosswind. that This is drafting right here, staying in his little side pocket. So... I'm just trying to recover again, get that heart rate down because 190, but yeah, Tyler took off right here and I'm like, well, he's probably just a super legit XC guy. So it's battle of last place again, me and Jordan duking it out. right here is going to cut into the woods and i thought like he looks like he's hurting already and i do not want to get stuck behind him on the downhills especially when second place is still kind of within reach and this wooded section is pretty technical i've been a super hardcore motocross fan for a while and there, if there's one thing i've learned from motocross when when a guy's coming up through the pack and if you want to have a good finish, you got to go with that guy. If he's going up through the pack, you got to follow him. You got to go with him. So I don't know that guy, that guy right there, uh, Jordan, he looked like he was kind of hurting. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to get some fresh air again. And this section was, was pretty technical. And I, I really think that I, I should have been on a full suspension because with the hardtail, when the suspension compresses, the bike pivots. It pivots on the, the rear axle, pivots forward. So it really feels weird going downhill. Now with a full suspension, both front and rear are squashing down to the ground. So yeah, yeah, th this was a little sketchy, but I was willing to hang it out there. And uh, right about here, I see, okay, I didn't lose track of Tyler. He's right there, you know, maybe what? 10 seconds back at this point so i'm like okay i'm glad i, I broke for, away from jordan and uh yeah with, with jordan it, it's weird i look back right there i never saw him again i don't know where he went uh he ended up finishing uh let's see yeah about two minutes behind me so i never saw him again i don't know what happened to him i don't know if he stopped if he i really think that he was huffing and puffing i think he was already blown out right there because you could just kind of see his body posture and everything so at this point i decided all right it is a two-person race for second me and tyler gonna duke it out but first i gotta catch up to him so i can latch back on I mean, I'm not doing like a crazy amount of power right here, but I was definitely, oh, oh okay. Went up to 500 watts there. I mean, that's a, a decent little effort, five, 600, but yeah, I could see like my rolling speed was good here. And, and also I try to let off the brakes on the turns. I just try to use as minimal brakes as possible. Cause when you pull your brakes, you also got to flex your core. You got to tense your muscles and that's also burning energy too. But this guy right here in the white and the black, he was actually in the 19 to 29 group, but he was the only participant in Cat 3, 20 to 29, or 19 to 29. So he was first place by default. So yeah, we dispose to him. And then I slowly get to work my way up to Tyler. And at this point, I don't, I don't know if he knew I was there, but uh, it's gonna get to the point where oh yeah he's gonna know because i'm coming and i want to get in that draft first place is gone i don't have to get second over tyler by five minutes i just got to beat him by a hair so i'm like okay i i want to go his pace and i'll kind of figure out if i can hold on to his pace and then maybe go past his pace maybe he's faster maybe he's slower you know it really it really depends so i really just I, I don't get to ride with people like this ever so i i was excited and i mean we haven't even hit the end of the first lap yet we are on the final climb of the first lap so i was just gonna hang on and just kind of learn learn from him learn about myself and 
see if I end up liking this XC thing. Because if I don't enjoy this race, I don't think I'll be racing XC again, but we'll see. Coming up here, you're going to see another rider pass me. This was uh, one of the older guys. He started two minutes behind us, and he's already passed me. So some of the Cat 3 dudes are just flying. They're killing it. But it's funny. I, I used to work with a doctor who was uh, big into XE racing, and he said that the 30 to 39 class is usually pretty thinned out because 30-year-old men are usually having to work a lot. They, they got a family. And, uh, yeah, Tyler here, he also has kids just like me. I got four kids. So, yeah, I mean, we're career-oriented in our 30s, so we we got to work. It's feast or famine, you know. We got to work for to put food on the table for the whole family. So training kind of goes by the wayside sometimes. Um, but right here is just a tremendous crosswind. So I'm just, I'm just doing my side draft again, just like I did with the other guy. And yeah, this is coming back to the uh, the start straight. Um, I probably should have. I, I have a bottle of carbs in my uh, my frame, and then I got just regular water in my water bag. I probably should have took a swig right here. I saw him do it, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know how much digesting you can do when your uh, when your heart rate is in the one ninety. I mean, your body is like total fight or flight response. It's like I don't know. I. Man, at this point, I really couldn't get my heart rate down. But you see, Tyler did an effort there. And I'm like, every time he does an effort, I really got to match that because I really don't want him to pull a gap, especially with this wind. I want to I wanna get his draft. But he does, you know, pull a little bit away right there. But I can, I can you know, roll my corners. I, I feel like I, I could roll my corners better than him. So, um he was a really nice guy. I, I don't, I want to choose my words nicely and I'm not trying to like talk crap and uh, we'll talk more about the, the nice, how nice he was and, and everything later on. Um, but yeah, just pulled back to him there. I'm like, all right, I gotta stick on this wheel no matter what. But yeah, I was like looking back right now. I could not see Jordan in fourth place. I'm like, where did he go, dude? It was, it was kind of funny, but I, I really enjoyed being able to like look around the course and kind of, you know, see where the other competitors are and everything. I thought that was cool. I never got to do that because the first time I raced XC was in 2021. And it was during the the peak of COVID and everything. And, and this uh, race organization in Arizona, man, they treated people like the scum of the earth. Like if you went to go pick up your race packet, they... They treated you like you were like some infected zombie or something. They were like, get away. So I really didn't have like a great XC experience the last time I, I did this. So this race was organized well, good spectating. And it was actually a low entry fee compared to the one in Arizona, which was like 80, 90 bucks. I feel like maybe even more. This one was like 50 bucks. So and they had like early bird pricing. So I, I really thought this event was money well spent at the end of the day because, I mean, we had a good race and, and the course was freaking awesome. And I, I even had some people say that from uh, Arizona, they're like, man, I wish I could race on a course like that because it's like a purpose built, you know, race course. And, and look at it, this turn is actually uphill, but it was fun to just like give it the beans a little bit and carry that speed and and at this point it's like 25 minutes in we just hit lap number two and you, you start getting into that flow state i mean i had already warmed up in 45 minutes to an hour uh for this because i don't know i, I feel like when i did practice on this course i did like five laps and my last two laps i felt like the fastest so i don't know I'm feeling good, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to gear up, try to get this heart rate down. I'm going to gear up because I think I can make a run. We can push together, but I think I'm going to go for second place. I think I can do this. So as this downhill went on, I had some time to think, how am I going to finish out this race?
So I developed a plan. I was gonna talk to Tyler a little bit. I don't wanna be glued on his back wheel the whole time, sit in his draft, and then just attack the line. That's kind of a dick move. So I, I thought, okay, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna try to talk to him, you know, maybe kind of gauge how he's feeling and kind of see where he's at. And also there's a lot of split decisions coming up. So I, I, I wanna get to know him a little bit because I don't want to, you know, hit a jump behind him and then he doesn't hit it and I end up landing on him or something. So, brop. This is the end of the downhill coming up on the next climb and this is when I'm going to do a little bit of talking with him. <clears throat> but I will say before we switch to the uphill, I was okay with a little gap opening up on the downhill because I knew it would just close right back up on these uphill. And it, just look how this uphill transition starts uh, coming up here. It, it really just, whatever gap you open up on the downhill just totally gets erased right here. Boop. <laughs> and then you're just right there on the uphill. But fun fact, that little recovery there on the downhill, that was the lowest I got my heart rate on the entire race, 177. Doing that optional line up there? What? You doing that optional line up there? Oh, I, can't do I, tried I tried a couple days ago. It's so slick. So yeah, I just asked Tyler here if he's gonna, gonna do this like optional rock hard, and he didn't do it the first lap, and that's the one I was kind of talking about where first place dude just kind of checked out, but there was like a huge traffic jam. Now when I first tried this, it was in the uh, it had just rain. It was pretty muddy. So I lost traction, but I'm using some, uh, I have a Vittoria Mezcal on the back and then a Vittoria Barzo in the front. But uh, you see the rock garden right there. It really just didn't hold traction right there on these kind of rocks. So I didn't really think it was worth it. And you had to maintain like 600 watts just to go up that rock garden. So, hey, remember, race for second place. If he's not going to hit it, then I'm not going to hit it. I'm going to conserve my energy. It's really not worth, you know, going and you know getting a couple bike link gap it's like he's just gonna close that up and like, i don't know i i don't want to ride away from him right now i mean i want to be glued to him like crazy I'm, yeah man i i don't want to lose sight of him at all right now and i'm just kind of looking at his body positioning and his posture and everything and he looks he looks decent um he, he's he probably looks as good as i feel right now 195 heart rate but yeah, onto a little downhill right here, and, and um, if you remember from the first lap, coming up here there was like a, a couple drops, and then there's an optional jump um, that I did the first lap, but um, I, I just talked to him a little bit, I said, are you hitting this? And he's not, but behind me, I can hear a dude just come in like a freight train, and keep an eye out for him, he's going to be coming up really soon, you'll see him. Doing the jump. This older dude just sends it on a trail bike. He had to been, uh, I don't know, 50, the 50, 60 class. And all of a sudden he's just like passing us. It's like, what? So it just kind of proved to me that, you know, Cat 3, you really don't need a full XC bike if this older dude just freaking sent the jump next to us and just left us in the dust. He finished a couple of minutes ahead of us. And remember, he started behind us by two minutes. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I really took this race a little too seriously, I'm finding out. But, yeah, back to the climb. And then we're going to talk to him a little bit again and just kind of see where he's at, uh, see what his energy levels are like. And remember, my FTP is uh, 234. And if you've done an FTP test, you know, FTP is supposed to be the watts you can sustain for an hour. But can I sustain 234 watts for an hour? No, because that would be really hard. But I will say, Tyler's putting down a really good pace, though. Man, that guy was crazy hitting that jump. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was like trying to pass both of us. <laughs> I recovered for three weeks to get sick. Oh, yeah. It sucks. Yeah, I've been having a cough too. My sinuses. How are you doing? There's a hell probably that I'm racing. <laughs> I did the short track on 
started. Oh yeah? That was hard. Was there a lot of people in the division? Yeah. Because the short track is open, right? I was pretty excited to, you know, kind of hold a conversation with him here, just kind of, you know, feel him out a little bit. Uh, he said he had just raced. He said he had been dealing with the sickness. Right? Now, I actually was That's just wild. sick uh, for several weeks also. It's like okay. I felt like everybody was getting sick the last couple of weeks. But, you know, this climb is, is pretty long, sustained. But now, you know, they say knowledge is power. So I know a little How bit about him. him. Oh. I know kind of his tendencies already. So, oh, right. um, right here, Somebody I'm people, like, okay, like, like on Zwift racing? I think like that, uh, I think, I think we can, we can do this. You know, I think I can, I can make a push and, and, uh, I, I might, you know, we're about a th quarter of the way, a third of the way through this lap. And I'm like, I might try to test him out a little bit, but you know, I, I don't know. I, he, he was so nice. I, I, I just really, I liked him. And I'm that thinking place, at, at some point I was thinking, you know, if he's doing all the work right here, it's like maybe maybe he should get that second place. He earned it. He's pulling me along the whole time. And that was my goal is to race somebody. But I, so I was thinking like, like man, I don't want to be a, a dick to this guy, like attack him super hard and sprint you know the last 50 feet and pass him so i was like i was i was liking him you know and i was already you know starting to i'm turning into a softy before when i would race it was like kill or be killed i hate everyone around me uh but yeah this was this was different scenario um but yeah back to the downhill and i i just know that if i recover if i don't push it at all I'm gonna be able to get right back to the back of him on the climb, so yeah, he can he can pull away a little bit. I'm gonna get that heart rate down, but um, the other guy was ahead of me the last time through here. But yeah, I could I really could roll through this section well. I don't I liked it. It was fun. It kind of just reminds me of just regular you know trail riding. But yeah, look at that that roll speed, and I'm just right back to the back of him. But coming up right here is. Uh, this turn to get onto the climb was actually super tricky and with the hardtail you're braking right here and it, the the front end is is diving so it was just really weird to make this turn right here watch this this right here. but you know that worked out pretty well so you know with this being the last lap we're hitting this climb two times right here because we're gonna go under the the trail and then we're gonna hit it on the uh, left side of the uh, banners um but yeah I'm, I'm glad the pace slowed a little bit because you know two 200 to 299 watts i mean i i can do that i can i can hang on you know heart rate 183 so i'm getting some recovery and actually i had, got my first drink of carbs there and it's funny, I got reminded that carbs can get digested, that you start digesting carbs in your mouth, actually. actually, You have amylase in your mouth, starts breaking down the food that you're eating right away. And I could feel that little jolt of uh, carbs hit my mouth. And I actually think it helped me. I was rocking a sports drink that I made myself, uh, 60 grams of table sugar, 30 grams of malodextrin, and an element pack. But right here is a pretty big moment in the race. I did not expect this. Check out what Tyler does here. Tyler is attacking me up this climb. This is awesome, but I gotta match him. And watch, watch this. This was, this was a fun moment. He looked back right there. I think he really tried to dump me off of the climb. And uh, that was just a fun moment for me, you know, having having another competitor and having some tactics going on. So <laughs> this part right here, just in the grass, it was kind of a false flat. And uh, it was just really, after that big long climb, you have this false flat and it's like, oh, you're dead. So we're going really slow right here is what I'm saying. <laughs> Well, yeah, back to this little back section downhill, letting him go, trying to recover, 
But I just, at this point, I was like, whoa, he tried to attack me and, and get rid of me on that climb. That was so cool. And But I was like, okay, what am I going to do next? What what should I do from here? I need to start planning my attack because I want to get the second place. Right here, his downhill speed was actually pretty good and he started rolling into this climb with good speed and I'm like, all right, things got a little serious. I wanted to pull back up to him because he could very well attack again because this is the same climb he just attacked me on. So I had to be ready for another one. Got right back onto the back of him and, and after that little attack, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know where he's at. I mean, he really put in a big charge there and I matched him, so. I don't know what that would do. I've never done that to someone, so I don't know how that feels when you try to attack someone and they're right there still. So I'm thinking, you know, he's such a nice guy and I've just been glued to his butt the whole entire time. I should probably do some work. You know, it's not it's not cool to just be towed the whole time. And I don't know how much drafting you can do on uh, mountain bike races, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to try to push it up this climb a little bit, kind of give him the business back, you know. He he attacked me on this climb. I'm gonna, I'm going to kind of do it back to him. 400 watts. Let's go. I mean, that's that's a pretty good amount of wattage. 500 watts and then I, I see him. He he wants to he wants to get me up this climb and and I really thought that that might have been a bad move for him cuz you don't got to win every climb. I was gonna, I was gonna do some work, you know. I was gonna, you know, take the wind a little bit, but he, he maybe he thought second of it. He kind of backed down there. Again, sorry for the wind noise, and I, I probably should have ran my microphone, knowing that you know Cat Three wasn't that serious with the guy, you know, riding a trail bike, and then the the guy who won, uh, what was his name again? Eric. He was on a. Uh, Marin Elroy or something like that. So he, he had like a Marzocchi Z1 fork on the front. So he's running a long travel hardtail Cromali and he just demolished us. So I could have ran my microphone and it would have been better audio. So growing pains for me. Bear with me here. This is my first time doing it. And I'm just really happy that the camera recorded the whole time. Coming from using GoPros since I started, GoPro would have froze up you know 20 minutes ago so i'm really pumped this thing held on i'm using that dji osmo action 4 and usually i use a dji mic for really good audio um yeah right there i looked down checking if uh, it's still recording and yeah it recorded the whole time no hiccups no overheating so i was pretty pumped but yeah right here this is the uh, cyclocross course that they built and you could really kind of push it right there 900 watts just to get over that hill and uh, I, I, I kind of glanced over there and I saw that Tyler was still right on me. So we're gearing up, man. He, he's ready to fight. Uh, but I, I really wanted to, you know, test him out and, uh, you know, hitting a thousand watts there. But it was funny right here during the race, I'm like, dude, I have a second camera, an action camera. I should have set up a, a rear view camera so I could have seen Tyler right here. But check this out, I'm going under a bridge and I actually see the first place dude right there on the overpass. First place has passed over us. Yeah, so Holy I just let shit. Tyler know right there. I'm like, dude, that dude was oh so goodness. far out in front. And, it, and it's weird, I had a guy comment on this channel. He must have saw the results or whatever, but he's like, he's like, yeah, why'd you get dropped? Uh, you know, you're seven minutes behind. Uh, first place you, you must have really been dragging on there but it's like nah man you're not bridging a seven minute gap and and you know second place fighting for second place is still pretty good so um yeah right here is going into the wooded section again but here comes tyler again he's gonna he's gonna pass me um i don't know you know i didn't lead him out much from here so maybe he thought his downhill speed was a little bit better and uh i'm like okay i know i know climb is coming up from here 
I really got to recover. And look at that, one, 177 heart rate. I recovered fast right there. Oh, oh, it hit 174 maybe. I don't know. Sometimes the heart rate monitor cuts out. But, um, yeah, technical little downhill. And, and I feel like he's pushing it right here. I really do. And he, I feel like he wants to get away from me. So I'm just having fun on the downhill, flowing it, not trying to put on my brakes as much. But, yeah, the... I don't know. I don't know about XC hardtails, guys. I <laughs> probably should have got a full suspension XC bike because it just, I don't know, I did not feel confident in, you know, that section right there. But, uh, yeah, right there on the back, and and uh, there, there's, like, a little bit of a climb, and then it goes down just a tad, and then there's the final climb out. And I'm thinking, okay. So the final stretch of this race is on the CX course, those man-made grassy hills, but I don't think that's a good spot to attack. And remember, I'm a noob. I haven't done an XC race, but I have done three D-class Zwift races, and I learned so much. I got to try a lot of different tactics in my Zwift racing. My first race, I actually won. The second race I did, I got ninth. But I tried a tactic of letting riders go and trying to catch up, but it didn't work. Making up a two-minute gap is nearly impossible. And then my third Zwift race, I won again. And these races aren't the, the short crits. They're hour-long mountain stages, and I learned a ton about tactics each and every time. On Zwift, if, if you didn't know, you can draft, and you can attack people up hills, and even if you're in second, you can dictate the race. So while there may be a rider in front of you, I feel like I'm in control of the race. And to end this thing out, I want to end it with my terms and actually avoid a sprint finish. Thinking back to the two times that I won, I tried a tactic where I attacked in the final 10 minutes of the race, and it worked like so well. So I put in a push up the last climb, this is on Zwift, and I opened up a gap, and the final minutes was me just maintaining the gap, and I felt like I conserved a lot of energy and avoided sprinting at the line after like an hour of racing. Those really zap your energy and take days to recover from. So I figured, okay, this climb coming up, I'm gonna put in an effort in the woods here and before getting into the cyclocross course and see if my Zwift tactic that I learned works. So I was getting ready here. I was getting ready. I was I was getting ready for a charge. You know, I'm I'm at this point 190 heart rate, it's not really coming down. I'm just like screw it, dude. I'm gonna freaking go into the red. It's going to be rough, but I'm going to go into the red, so let's take a little drink of water. I didn't notice right here, he, he really let off the pace. We're down to like 100, 100 watts. So I'm thinking like he could really, you know, just like mess with me and he could really go super slow and make me like force me to pass him. And he could even go so slow if I don't pass him. I mean, last place dude could be coming up on us basically just punishing me for being on his wheel so long but yeah this was the climb i was thinking about getting ready to attack on but then this happened and this was the moment of the race tyler i don't know what happened looks like he took a bad line lost a little bit of traction and then he was off the trail took a step off his bike and let me know what you think what happened but be nice he was a pretty nice guy but regardless, right there, I saw my opening and I thought right here, I gotta go. You know, stepping off your, he just put like a foot down. He didn't like crash or anything, but I thought, okay, I gotta, I gotta put in an effort now and open up this gap. Cause I know coming from a stop and then matching me at 300 watts, that's gonna be a pretty big effort. And this was the perfect opportunity. So right here is a 180 turn. I could look back and I saw him. He was probably 10 seconds back at this point. And I'm thinking like, whoa, dude, like this, this is real. This is really happening. And this is the first time I had been alone in the whole race. So I kind of started talking to myself. Now I just got to maintain a gap, just like Zwift. And man, Zwift racing is, you could learn a lot with Zwift racing. You, sh you should try it out if you haven't already. Second place. Oh yeah, had a dose of adrenaline. Oh, I think he blew up. As I looked back again, I saw that the gap had increased even more. So right there, 
I just knew, man. I, I knew second place was right within my grasp. So it was all about just maintaining that gap and going back onto the cyclocross course here. Here's where it's coming back into the grass. So that was the final, you know, the last big climb. Yeah, sure, I have these little grass climbs coming up. But yeah, man, that was that was the final thing. And I, I started feeling that adrenaline, those butterflies, and going back to racing, paying money for being nervous. This is what I paid money for. And, and this was a good feeling, man. Yeah, a little effort there. And, and it, it's one thing that's weird about this tactic of attacking before the finish line is you don't have to push so hard and you don't have to feel so dead at the end of the race so it's kind of nice cruising into the finish line yeah sure my heart rate's high but my, my adrenaline was kind of peaked right here but yeah it's nice cruising into the finish line and not having to do a final sprint because those final sprints zap you like neurologically even but with these man-made little grassy climbs here they're so short that that was the best way to get over it is just to do like a you know three second effort 900 watts someone said what's up right here so what's up to that guy but listen to what i say right here <laughs> i'm getting goosebumps hell yeah and this kind of feeling of, of racing <laughs> and feeling that that high you can't get that many other places and, and there's so many people in the world that they don't experience this kind of feeling from racing and, and doing well and hard work paying off and man it's just a feeling that's it's it's hard to it's hard to replicate and it takes a lot of work but it's like with with a race like this it, it's really the work has already been done uh you know with training and everything and these races are just collecting your reward so that's how i look at it yeah I like this feeling. Heck yeah. Yeah, this little grassy, loopy course right here, this is where all the uh, money went into making this place and, and Fayetteville really put a lot of money into this kind of course and this, this racing and I really appreciate it. Really great course. I mean, look at all that stonework and everything, but crossing the line here, my first XC race in years in up second place. Adam Steinberg. Second place, Evans Mountain Bike Sega. Evan Steinberg. And your winner with a gold medal is going to be Eric Salazar. Champion, one, two, and three. Awesome job, riders. Well, there we go. Second place, man. <clears throat> the first place guy he was probably 15 minutes ahead like he was so far ahead um i'm i said in the while the race i said there he is he's passing over us and that was an entire back section that he was ahead of us so that was cool and and, and i really achieved my goals of what i set out to do for this race you know ride with someone the whole time and not get last place and it's funny, uh, several months ago, I had some weirdo comment on my video and he's like, he's like, hey, you're going to quit on your first race. Think of me when you're quitting. And it was weird, dude. I don't know if he said that to like motivate me or something, but that's, that's been in my, my head for a while. This dude was telling me that didn't even know me that I was going to quit during the race. It's like, no, man. And it felt good um, riding with that guy, Tyler, uh, in the maroon the whole time kind of going his pace i knew first place was gone and fourth place i saw him really struggling i i knew he was probably had probably blown up because i didn't see him after the first lap i was like looking back which is really cool like looking back looking around kind of knowing what's going on and and yeah i was following tyler the whole time but i really felt like i was able to dictate my whole race it's like yeah he would do a little effort i would match him but um that little mistake that he made, I, I decided I'm just gonna go from here. And uh, yeah, that, that felt good, man. 
and not having to go to a sprint finish, I, I learned this on Zwift as well. When I, if I can open up a little gap before the finish line, it's like you don't have to put into this gigantic effort and just kill yourself to get the place you want across the line. So I, I really like that. Like, all right, I got like five minutes to go. I'm gonna attack now. And then, you know, open up a 20, 30 second gap and then just coast across the line, really. So that was fun and it, it felt good. I got some adrenaline. Uh, yeah, I think I wanna wanna keep racing. Now I do have Unbound coming up and, and it's it's tough because obviously the biggest factor holding me back is my weight i weigh 185 pounds so if i could get my weight down that'd be great but i can't go on a caloric deficit because i'm doing high low season two have to put a lot of effort into doing uh you know this big series for my main channel so it's like i can't really go on a caloric deficit and unbound is right after i'm going to be finished with high low so <coughs> i'm just going to maintain my calories i'm just going to keep carving up like i do and try to hit my hours for the week. Um, I, I think a caloric deficit, you're just gonna be kind of tired and I don't wanna say miserable, but almost. So I, I don't wanna do, I, I can't do that right now. So yeah, I'm just gonna have to be hanging out at 185 pounds, you know? So if you, uh, if you made it this far in the video, if you've been along, if you've been with me with all this, uh, fitness journey i really appreciate it i hope you're uh you know sticking to your fitness as well and uh yeah get out there and race man it's fun this was like 50 dollars the entry fee i think it was worth it this time around the last time racing in arizona riding in, in no man's land you know no one in front of me no one behind me that sucked that was a waste of money but this time i actually got to race somebody it was freaking awesome but yeah thanks for joining me appreciate it see you on the next one